What is going on my reefing fam? March here, Fragbox TV, a UK edition. We are in London. I am in London for the first time with my friend here, Paul. Hello, that we met Hi. off the channel. Salut. Welcome this, to London. Thank you very much. This is not going to be a family friendly episode. Uh, just going to get that out of the way. I'll try not to swear very much, but we're on our way to go see. Where are we going? Something consultancy. We're going to Advanced Aquarium Consultancy. Advanced Aquarium Consultancy. This is going to be a fun episode. We're going to do a tour of their store and their coral farm. Stick around. This is going to be a real fun one. We're taking the tube for the first time. We're on the tube. Frag box is underground. Seven sisters. I wonder if any of them are single. Getting closer. Guys, we're going far for reefing fam. This is not an easy trip. Okay, we are here. We've made it quite the journey. I'm really excited to do this video, guys. Essex Coral Fart Advanced Aquarium Consultancy. Here we are, here we are. How long you been at this location? Um, uh, well, in this this particular bit, six years, but all in all, it's about nine years. Nine years in business? I've been, no, no, I've been in business about 15. 15, wow. Um, and originally had a maintenance and installation firm. Um, do you, do you I've been in trade 33 years. Now. That's a long time. A couple, a couple of you, so you've I'm been in the trade longer than I've been alive. Yeah. Look at these, some beautiful aquapora. I don't know where to start reefing fam. Maybe we'll start with the fish. You guys know that I have severe ADHD, so I'm gonna try and do this a little bit more organized than normal. Hmm, look at this, some nice hammer coral. I think we'll start with the fish. Lots and lots of fish over here. Wow, how many fish on hand? Looks like a lot. Two, three, four hundred? Yeah, oh, well, look at this, what a tang, hello. Beautiful. What does something like that sell for? Uh, that's, a, that's a top rate of a blue face. That was expensive. That's seven nine nine. Seven nine nine. But, but, you know, not we can have them at about three. It's a really rare new species, actually. Look at that. I haven't seen the anthus right. in a while. Right. See, there's a new little, see this little yellow. Very rare yellow dotty back. He's hiding. He's camera shy. Oh, oh, come say hello. There he is. What do you call it? Um, well, we've known to this white uh, yellow, uh, white nose dotty back. Down there. Lots of fish. Come out the tanks are very clean. Algae free. We don't see any dead fish on the bottom. Always a good sign. Incredibly, incredibly rare fish. You guys saw the one that we saw there in Germany. Very rare to see a second one. There. I get the feeling you're into the fish with the candy basket, right? No, that's no? actually oh, sorry. a uh, peppermint cock. Oh. Somebody captured breeding these yet? Uh, not peppermint the hogs, I don't think. Not oh. yet. Um, Stack moving fish. Even more. These out some storms as well. These are all bred locally. Beautiful storms. Absolute textbook example of storms. Look at these. They look like Dalmatians. Very healthy. Bandit storms. Let's see the bandit storms. My breed has been isolating these so that they've got the bandit mask. Was it Mr. Russ? Yes. Sir. I haven't seen one in a very long time since they banned Hawaii. Oh yeah. Hello. Reefers, this tank may look familiar to you. This is, you know, one of our favorite ones in the store. That's the Fluval Evo 13.5, the one that Tia's running. Awesome little tank. Oh, we just got this in stock too. It's nice to see these different brands across the other side of the world. Same very good fish food. Correction, coral food. How do you have uh, so no, many? That was a tank bread. Yeah. Uh, you know, we just, we, just kept, we just kept them as a monoculture display, really. Beautiful. Um, Look great. There's no other species of whale aquarium. I've never seen one in person. Yeah, look the, at uh, this. It's got a nice valve now. They've changed the design a Heavy lot. Heavy duty. So they've, they've moved the sump and improved the sump a lot with a new uh, date valve. Look at these. Niles, German, right? Yes, yeah. yeah you can tell. And That's quality. The best. You don't lose any space in the tank. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, nope. Nobody's doing that. Everyone's doing internal these days. It's quite nice. Riffler, I just saw this for the first time yeah. there at Interzoo. I, I actually hadn't heard of this brand. Is it big here? Uh, it's, it's growing, certainly. It's Polish, right? Yeah. And but the, you'll, see it, you'll definitely see it. That's, so that's what they're saying. It's just about to break yeah. into the US market. You yeah. like the light, obviously. It's like right yeah. when you walk in, it's well, the first one you use. It's down quite low. That's only down at 30%, but they do. They, they've got some power. Oh. I mean, you can really. What do you call this? That's a, a, a blue Kenya tree. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, we're growing it. Tree, I hadn't yeah. actually seen it anywhere other than our shop. It's nice to see yes. it here. Very nice. Tia, this is for you. I know you're going to watch this video. Check. This is an amazing, amazing leather tank. Little red sea. Now, Everywhere right? you turn, there's an, another display tank. Yeah. That's a lot of work, though. No, a lot of we got to top them off yeah, with fresh water, the test the salt. Like to be inspired. Yeah. Black, black foot clowns from the Maldives. Beautiful. 
Oh, nice and hard. Oh, Red Sea Light. We don't see this is the 50? Yes. Yeah, I haven't seen one. I actually haven't seen one running. We used to use the 90 in the shop. Yeah, this is something we don't, not yet in North American markets, but hopefully coming soon. Really, really nice stuff. We're the really, same. If yeah. you use it, you believe yeah, in it, you sell it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's easy to sell. Like, yeah. You, are you using the Neptune stuff on any yes. of the tanks here, yeah, running the store? Most, most systems are covered by us, so, but I, I use it predominantly not to control, but to provide information. Yeah. So I'm using... Just as feedback, yeah. yeah. So we, for example, we'll show you on the, the main display for a minute. We'll use, for example, uh, Neptune for uh, monitoring, basically. Right. And the control is done by the staff. So it'll give you the reading, and then <laughs> yeah. you, you decide what to do yes. based on that. How many different systems here in the store? One, uh, two, three, system, four, five. This was put in about, about two years ago. This is all uh, uh, self-built uh, fiberglass, but we've uh, faced was, it off. I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. I like it. It's cool. Um, this one's monitored by a uh, KHP for the reef factory thing. How and come uh, XR15s over XR30s? Uh, better spread. Because I, did, because I wanted to stretch them out a little oh, bit more, just right. to create a little bit more spread. So it's like stretching an XR30 mm -hmm. out just a touch. Yeah, a little bit more room. Are these Gen 4? No, Gen, Gen 5. 5. Gen 5 They're blues? Gen 5 blues. How uh, do you there's a mixture. I've got the both. There's the Gen... There's, you've got pros and blues mixed to get the benefit of both, if you like, really, on there. So we can tune the colour exactly how we want it. Beautiful. Um, on there. I kind of like how you have rock throughout the tank, it's a little well, unusual. Well, we just wanted to create a little bit more interest. It we looks just, a little yeah. more natural. Yeah, we, we, you know, as much as Egg Crate's practical, it's not particularly um, pretty, is it? Look at this beautiful. Ghani Alveopora? Yes, Ghani yeah. Apora. That's a Ghani Apora, got some Stunning. beautiful alves. These are all locally, these are actually fully aquacultured. These, not the Ghanis, but the Alveopora are locally aquacultured beautiful. by Eco Marines. Galaxia. Yep, very popular coral for us. Beautiful pieces of octospawn, hammers, frog spawn, utilia, nice clutch corals. Maybe not new to you. What but, are you looking at? Uh, this. Uh, I've actually never seen that. Yeah, nor, nor had I until a few months ago. It's what is so, it called? White eye? Oh, it's a pavona. Well, it's, it's not a pavona. I think it's a life of phylum. But we've marked it up as pavona Usually, because that's what we thought. Lithos, or we call them lithos, I only see them yeah. in sort of like a blue, whitish blue kind of that's color. It, yeah. And they're not. Not that they're ugly, but they, they don't stand out. No, that's true. And in actual fact, I'm still not 100% on the actual uh, scientific ID on that. But we believe that they're white eye like uh, lilac fine or something like that. These not are light to fine on, but light to fine. These are beautiful chalice. Everything looks very uh, old and mature. They're not fresh cut. They're oh, no, 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 no. There's no fresh cuts, no, no fresh glue. Like, at all. Did, everything's puddled, grown out yeah. over the plug. Very, very good sign. Yeah. Super, super healthy stuff. Some mangroves in here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got some yeah. more over there? Yeah. yeah. Julian Sprung would be happy to see these. Oh, I'm a big fan of Julian and these mangroves. We spent, uh, we spent a good afternoon with wine and cheese at the show doing nothing but talking yes. about yeah. this yeah. kind of stuff. So this looks like it's your Acropora tank. Yes. But you yeah. have, if it's anything wild comes into here because of the risk, yeah? Of course, we dip everything on arrival. We use primer, you know, uh, um, fills stuff primer. So everything's dipped, brushed and clean when it comes in, but of course still being an aqu uh, not aquacultured, we keep the wild specimens separate from any frags that we do. Okay. Do you normally run the light this white? Um, no, this is on request of a lot of customers. They, they, you we, can really see the colour yeah, there, right? Yeah, we, we almost we, don't even need the filter. Yeah, we, we, um, quite white. yeah, you probably won't need a filter on those. No. Um, we do have it quickly tuned to blue if someone wants to use their silly glasses in the blue. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can do that. These millipora are, it looks like you've had them a while. The color is very yeah. rich, very yeah, deep. We, we try and encourage a little bit more nitrate when they first come in, mm -hmm. just so that they uh, start to regain some of the Zuzu Amphili. Yeah, they come sometimes a little bit bleached, right? Yes. You almost have to bring them back. Yeah. Yeah, these look like they've been here. Yeah, oh, wow. Actually, we're, we're waiting on delivery. We're normally, a little bit more. There's normally there's about 50 pieces missing out of there. Mm. And you guys ship this stuff? No. Oh no. 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 We, we generally try. We, we generally try and encourage people to store because that way they can always hand pick and know that they're getting the best. How about the stuff on the shelves? Is this being sold online too? Yes, yep. everything we do. We do all of our dry online. Nice. Oh, Vitalis. You yeah. guys know this in the shop. Yeah. That's our favorite food. That's what we feed yeah. the fish. Very good. Yeah. Very popular seller. Very good yeah. stuff. Lots of European brands. All good, good equipment. You don't have any Chinese brands in here. I don't see any Jibaos or Jacquards. Uh, we do have some down there, but a lot hidden of in the our, corner. Our, our customer base is more really is more towards quality. That. 
Yeah. yeah. One thing I want to mention, I love, look at the presentation. All the bottles are pulled to the front. Maybe that's something you wouldn't meant, you wouldn't notice if you're just walking in the store, but as a shop owner, somebody that's, whoever's stocking the shelves is doing it with care. The uh, shelves are full. And whenever I go into a store, you can kind of judge the health of the store and their, how they're doing based on the shelves. If you walk in and they have, you know, just one of these or one of these, it is usually uh, not a very good sign. But very, very well, well stocked and lots and lots of good brands, high quality brands. Actually, probably one of the cleanest shops I've ever seen. Yeah, very, very clean, very organized stuff. Looks like it is exactly where it's supposed to be. It's not the biggest shop, but kind of like us, they're using, they're getting the most out of the space. You start to go up, you get creative with shelving just so you can stock all those things that you want to put on the shelves. And it doesn't smell fishy. Sometimes you walk into a coral store and you smell, you're introduced with the, uh, you're greeted with the smell of the ocean. That is not the case in this, in this shop. Very, very clean. Check this out, another display tank. So many display tanks. I've never seen these zoas. And you know, if I say that, it, eh, I think it holds a little bit of merit because I'm a Zoa freak. It's really what I care about the most. And whatever these are here, they look fake. It looks like they've painted on color. Some scrambled eggs in the front, maybe some dragon eyes. But those back there, if there was a piece I could take home, it would be these really, really healthy. This looks like a well-grown out tank, mature. Look at the chalice. This doesn't happen overnight. That That's probably a good couple years of growth. This one as well. Look at this. I didn't even notice it because it's growing right onto the sand bed. Beautiful examples of Favia. Oh, hello, Mr. Ross. Who are you? Check this guy out. Looks like they're running some Hydra, AI Hydra 64 HDs. It's kind of nice to see a mix. They have Radions, they have Hydras, there's 64s, there's a Neptune Sky over on that tank, and then the, the other Polish one that I have little experience with. But it's nice to walk into a store and then see, you know, different flow. There's some Gyres, there's some Nero 5s, he's got MP40s on there. I think it's important to have all those different brands on display. It makes it easier to show them off and talk about them and sell them too at the same time. Oh, hello, what are you? I am stumped with that piece. I've never seen that. That's pretty cool. Classic, classic, classic. This is the Jack O'Lantern Leptoceras and a beautiful little tuxedo urchin doing his job, picking up stuff and wearing it as a hat. Oh, I've never seen this either, actually. This is pretty cool. There's quite a few pieces in here I've never seen. Looks like a, maybe an encrusting Ganyapora, Bernardapora. I am in an alien world right now. Look at this. Everything's different. Look at how this door opens. Woo! Okay, March, relax. Deltec, that's something that's not so big that actually I'm gonna see if we can start carrying more of that because we do have Canadian distribution for this brand. And I noticed at the Reef of Palooza, no, wrong show, Interzoo, almost every tank was using one of these on um, on their displays there. Aha, I found it, D&D. Just stunning, check this out, and this. Absolutely beautiful. What'd you find? You buying something today? Yeah. Ah, the trip was worth it. What did you find? Some good epoxy, that's my favorite. Why don't you, you don't want the, the purple? He's going with the gray. I'm not trying to talk you out of it. Just, no, no, <laughs> I just I think content. Well, I haven't cycled yet, so. Oh, so the, the purple's going to stick out. I've got no coral line. Uh -huh. Actually, right before I left, I just shot a video on using that exact thing on how to attach um, some hard coils in the tank. I haven't released it yet. What's the other thing you found? NP Pro? Uh, nitrite test. Nice, yeah. Paul here is just cycling his fourth tank. Well, not, he, not that he has four. He's on his fourth tank. He's got a Red Sea Reefer. What is it? Two? Uh, E260. E260. Shout out. Shout out to Canadian brand, best coral food around. Get it, you already know what it is. Euphilia, four days. Check this out, lots of hammers. I really like the way you set it up. This is unusual. I've never seen it like this, but I kind of like it. This layered system with the racks. And the pricing is more or less in line for uh, what we're paying. $60 in pounds. Yeah, it's about about the same. It's going to be about $90 or $100 Canadian. Almost exactly, actually, the same. Oh, look at this beautiful example, cobra worm. Stunning piece, some nice elegance. Everything's super, super clean. Oh, hello, I didn't see this. It's just every, everywhere you turn, there's another, another display tank. I think there's five, seven, six, seven. Bird's nest, he. This, if there's a theme tank, this is definitely it. Look at these bird's nests, very, very mature. These, this thing's gotta be a couple years old at least. One of the easiest SPS to grow. Wow, look at the Recordia. Hiding underneath here. They really don't need a lot of light. I bet they're getting virtually no part. And you get that's when they start to stretch and look like that, but they're still healthy. You find them sometimes when you're like, if you're looking for them out in the ocean, they'll be on the other side of a rock. Hello, fishies. Hello, fat fish. This is really cool. I've never seen a tank with this much bird's nest. Tons of pieces. Different colors. 
Yeah, very mature. You can see what happens as they start to grow. They almost, almost kind of like hurt themselves. They'll start to shade and they don't get light in there. And then you got to go in and snap a piece off and, and make room for new growth. Oh, look at this grass. Some, you need to show people now. Uh, cheap, you can keep SPS. What are you it's putting in like? It's a hardy SPS aquarium. Yeah, like what? So 10 or $20 10, pieces? $20 pieces. What you, it's not what the corals are, it's what you do with them. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's incredible. So it's just, it's I like that. It's literally the deliberately designed so that beginners don't feel threatened by SPS. Yeah. So it's just a so basic maybe. system. It's just a Berlin system. Mm -hmm. Skimmer. But, yeah, just floss, skimmer. Carbon. That's it, you know. But do, you, do you water change it? Uh, yes, we've, uh, we we do some drastic water changes. We, we apply all old methods to it. So it's a good 25% to 33% every two weeks. How old does it take? Uh, sorry? How, how many years? Um, it's been about 18 months. Wow. Yeah, look, from it, frags. Looks, it looks older than that, yeah. They're all my old heirloom Ceratophora. It's all the Ceratophora collection that we have. So we've got like Malaysian species there. Then we got the lime berry one. This is nice. Yeah, this is this is some. This is actually Michael Paletta. Actually, when he came here, said this was pretty special. I want to get it. Yeah, I want a piece yeah. of that in my suitcase. Yeah. Um, and this is yeah, some that's sort very of nice new too. species from Malaysia as well. Some sort of so is, that's nice too. Actually, yeah, the, the that's green. a new Indonesian one they discovered. Calendrum, the original one. You notice the lights are tuned very much like metal halide. You, you like the? I, I guess you do. You're using them throughout the store. The Red Seas, right? These um, are the nineties. Yeah, those are nineties. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've found fantastic growth with, with, with those on it. You don't use substrate? No, deliberately. Nope. Yeah, yeah, almost uh, just yeah. here, I guess. Yeah, so no substrate and that one, no substrate this one, purely because of uh, uh, hydrodynamics, mm. so that we don't have to have ridiculous amount of flow pumps, so we're still increasing our flow around the display, because we knew it would go weedy. Right. We knew it was going to end up like a bunch of weeds. Yeah, yeah. And, and then if you get some detritus, you'll just go in there and I guess yeah. siphon, siphon it, it out. out. Yeah. How come on this tank you went with with uh, substrate? Um, because purely this is really what people, this was tank was built around what people, oh. what people really want. That's, so that's, un that's very unusual. That's been grown from scratch. That's a 10 year old specimen of uh, Alvia Porter. Oh no, that, but also this this corner. I mean, that's yeah. the, uh, this is Deltec. Oh. This is when they used to make aquariums. I mean, this is one of the most expensive aquariums you'd ever get. It, the, the stand is crazy. It's like a work of art. Like, this overhang is nuts. It's Mercedes, uh, Mercedes paint. Wow. Oh, um, yeah, look at that. Yeah. It's yeah. like a, yeah. It feels like a car. Yeah. Beautiful. How big is How many gallons? How many liters? This is 1,500 liters. It's a big yeah. tank. Um, but it's designed really this one. Is, this is what, you know, uh, mixed rig deliberately. So it's a little bit of something for everyone. Can you explain to me how you keep pipefish? Because I have zero luck. Right, well, there's What's two, the secret? two species of pipefish that are really, really stand out from the rest is the Jansen's flame pipe mm -hmm. and the blue stripe pipe that, That's the blue stripe? Yeah, and those will tolerate higher flow rates and will compete very well on the on a mixed or busy reef. Mm. Um, and then so, otherwise you need like yeah. super low flow? Yeah, if you're going to keep banded pipefish or candy pipes, they really need to be on their own. But Jansen's and blue stripes are... Uh, and so what, are you f what are you feeding them? Whatever you feed Whatever the fish? Whatever I throw in there, that's how they're, they're, they'll give you an idea. The pipefish that are in here are around about seven years old. This fish is not shy at all. No. I usually, I'm used to them hiding. You don't see mm. them throughout the day. That's quite, that's a white bar amphibia as well. That's not showing his white bars very well. It's like very light. Yeah. How old is this tank? This looks very old. Uh, this is only about five years old, six years old. I like I like the way you've used the sea fence, the gorgonians yeah. throughout. Looks very, yeah. very much like a reef. Yeah. We try to we try to sort of um, get, you know give the impression of a more of a mixed reef rather than SPS dominated. Yeah. What a crazy mix. This looks incredibly mature. Mm. Beautiful pieces. This is just stunning. Are you feeding? Um, we do use a little bit of Benny Pets, okay. or Benny Reef. Um, we use some bacterial live supplements in it as well. Any amino um, acids? Um, not very often, no. It's very high in nitrates, about 60 to 90 ppm in nitrates, so we sort of avoid the aminos on this. Oh, it's a little bit higher, a little yes. bit more nutrient rich. Yes, yeah. Look Definitely. at this. If you didn't know what you're looking for, this is actually quite rare. We don't see a lot of it. This, uh, it's a blue digitata, and it's kind of hiding in the middle. It, it doesn't well, stand out. Oh, wow. Stand. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, up, up in there. It's not like a fluorescent green rainbow dynamite chalice but it's actually a true blue acro and yeah if there's there's a few pieces I would take home that were on my list it's those zoas a piece of that and a piece of that that bird's nest over there really oh cabbage hello yeah. and then there's uh, that's quite a rare but it's a brown coral the branching cyphastria yeah, no 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 that's actually a turban area heronensis I've which never is a seen very it. rare species on there incredible oh there's a branching cyphastria yep right next to it 
these look like this is what Acropora oh. cardus. Uh, yes, very, yeah, it's the uh, what we would call uh, Herlock's dragon. Oh, we call it needle in the haystack. Yes, that's it's enough. funny how you, yeah. you cross the ocean and then yeah. it's, it's a different name. Yeah. Very clean. There's no algae. There's no pests. I don't see any aptasia. Mm. Ventolina, Gorgonia ventolina. We don't see too many of these in here. These are actually a, um, um, a photosynthetic sea fan. So although they look difficult, they're not actually that difficult. From the Caribbean, right? Well, we we, we get them from Cuba. You can't get them legally from. Lots of the regions in the Caribbean, but they come out from Cuba. Just incredible. Put this open brain hiding there in the back. Really big piece. Such an incredible tank. There's so much going on in here. It's hard to focus. What is this? That's a pencil ras or a candy ras. There's a freckle face tang. Yeah, this one is something else. Yeah, he came to me as a very much a tricolour tang that's now not very much a tricolour <laughs> tang after they change. How long have you had him? Um, he's, I've had him about four or five years. You probably get a lot of offers on him, huh? Uh, yeah, but I mean, they're, they're very expensive over here. They can be anything up to sort of £10,000 now. They, when I first sold uh, David Saxby, his first one, that was £300. So that's, that shows you the change in the last 20 years on, uh, on, on that type of tank. It's beautiful. Well, we should be able to show you another one of those shortly. Like a um, swimming piece of art. Just you know, look, even in the back, there's so much depth of this tank you get lost. Look at this Gani Pora in the back. Looks like some other sort of chalice growing there. Awesome, awesome job. What's uh, what's this being lit with? Also radion? Yeah, uh, G5. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. You have more than one on there. Yeah, 10, 10 G5 XR15. Incredible. But they're only running at about 60%. We've got a higher new We've got a lower DKH okay. and a lower but level of light. When you say lower DKH, like seven, seven yeah, and a half? Natural. Yeah. Yeah. Are you measuring the par that's coming out of the light? I, I, I've, I've honestly, 30 years, never bothered with par. No. No. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. How come? Just purely because I don't think it's always relevant. I think it's just because of the experience I have with the corals and knowing where to put them. I've never really worried too much. Your eyes become sort of yes. the par meter over. Yeah. You know where to yeah. stick it. Yeah. yeah. That's something that comes with experience. The fish this are is, just this incredible. This is looking quite blue at the moment. There is quite a large white portion to the day of light, so it's not always lit very blue. And it'll go through different yeah. sort of ups yeah, and downs. Yeah. Around about lunchtime, it looks a little bit more T5 metal halide uh, looking. And this um, tank gets water changed as well? Uh, yes, this one gets water changed sporadically, about every six to eight weeks because it's on a calcium reactor. It's not dosed, although we do have some um, uh, secondary dosing on a via an alcatronic should the carbonate hardness drop. Um, but this one's, uh, whereas the Red Sea's running on a dosing method, so we're displacing ionic balance, the balance, mm -hmm. so we do lots of big water changes. What kind of salt are you using? This is DDH2O. How about the rest of the store? Uh, mostly Red Sea, Blue Bucket. Blue Bucket, okay, yeah, we're yeah. using the black. Yeah. Is DD a good salt? We don't, we don't yes, DD is very similar to the Red Sea products, um, it, but it sits mineral wise in the middle. Terrassa. So, you know, it'll have slightly more magnesium levels. These things hold a special place in my heart, Terrassa yeah. guns. Yeah, the beautiful. There's also hypnosis there, can you see that? No. The, the, this oh, type, yeah. that's the hippo clam, or hippo's foot clam. Probably. Are, are these cultured? Uh, yes, they are, yeah. Incredible. Yeah, so you've got crocea, deraisa, and hypnosis. And you have them on these little nice clam bases? Yeah. We try and mount them always on a base if we can. And these, maxima? Um, they are crocea. Little crocea. Oh, they, I'm not they, used to seeing them so small. Yeah, it's possible that they're a crocea maxima hybrid. Huh. Yeah, the, the shell on the outside looks like it, it wants to be a Maxima, yes, but it hasn't right. decided yet. Yeah, nowadays we can never be 100% sure whether they're hybrids or not. Look at these. Do you want that a little bit? Can this light in one as well? No, no, that's it'll come through. And you guys, are, are you culturing these frags that are here? These are being yes. grown? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I'm going to show you some more of that shortly. There's a lot, a lot going on here. A lot, a lot to look at. More torch corals. Everywhere you look, there's some more coral. Oh, look what I found. Candy apple reds. I hope you guys like the longer format. This is going to be definitely a longer video. I could almost break it up into different parts. Just display, just fish, just corals and frags. And it tells me that there's also a farming operation going on as well. Yes. How many units are you here? One, two, uh, three? We are two here. Yeah. And then we have another one, which was the original store, which we just left as quarantine for the fish or isolation. Yeah. Is that connected? Is it close yeah, by? No, it's to down, so we can take you through there. Oh, nice. Like yeah, absolutely. Let's yeah. do it. Oh, man, what a fish. 
fills the, uh, and Paul's got another tricolour tang down there, you might like the look of. Why are you hiding him? So he doesn't oh, get, he, so so he, doesn't get him. he doesn't get robbed? <laughs> so no, I'll get some food, I'll see if I can dig him out for him. I always like seeing behind the scenes how what makes the, the tanks run. Oh, Alcatronic, hello. Really cool, look at this, this is some sumps. The crazy amount of plumbing. What, what is this tank doing? It's just holding rock? Basically, yes, it's, it's how I see the article. All of the main displays rock was real reef rock that you've just seen. And then we fed it with the... Um, and then we fed it with some Indonesian live rock from birth. So if you like this, we got a little iPad set up, hooked up to the Apex pH 8.24, and he's using all three methods for controlling alkalinity. Uh, calcium reactor, if something goes wrong with this, the Alcatronica is keeping a close eye as an insurance plan, which goes to a doser and a liquid, and then at nighttime, running on a calc stir to help buffer the pH. It's a pretty complex, this is not a normal way of doing things. Well, it's an old-fashioned way. Old-fashioned way, really, yeah. The only modern technology is really the Alcatronic. Yes. But the rest of it, the tank's German. It's a Deltec tank. It's Deltec kit. It's run by a Royal Exclusive Skimmer. Um, it's, a, it's actually older than it seems. The modern thing would be that the twin techs, obviously, a more modern version of the calcium actor. But the majority of the system is very... It's quite old, really. It's quite an old method. But Just, it works. It works. Yeah, it's working. You know. Space. We're not done yet. We're going to the lab. We're, go we're going to the bat cave. It's air temperature in it. Oh, there's more. Um, Look at this. And this is the. Basically, we use this for any isolation for impulse. So any new arrivals that are coming in from abroad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, then we'll. This is like a quarantine. Yeah, it's a quarantine. But it depends on the species. I'm not one for quarantining all. Um, it depends on the species. If it's a mandarin. You just get in things. What you know? the heck is this? Geisman made a hybrid. Yes, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. Hybrid system, truly the yeah. best. I'm still a big believer in T5s. You guys always hear me talk about them. Pain in the ass to change the bulbs. Expensive to run. Hot as hell. Inefficient. Pain in the ass to mount. But someone else is still using. It makes me feel good about myself. On this tank too. On this tank too. Still something to be said about T5 when it comes to getting coloration on acro growth, overall coral health. Um, for us, it's the density. Mm. The spread. It's the density. If you're growing, wow, it's the density. What a collection. The flow is pretty intense in here. Check out the polyps on these things. Very, very intense flow. If you want to keep acro or you want to keep SPS, flow is incredibly, incredibly important. Looks like he's using some MP40s and Gyre XF350, something uh, like that? Yes, yeah. 250. You like those? You find that they're reliable? Um, they're, they're moderately reliable. When they work, they the, work. They, that's right. But the best thing about, particularly when you've got a high density of frags, is distributing the flow. It's very wide. Evenly. Yeah. Yeah. I like the older ones better. I found with the 250s, I had less issues. And then I don't know what happened when they switched to the 350s. I, yeah. I felt like I was always fixing them. Or yeah. They were grinding. This is this is quite the collection here. This runs predominantly with a white spectrum for the majority of the day. Um, very much like in the traditional sense of sort of 14k type of frags. What a um, Likewise, this is where we perhaps put some of our more uh, pieces that we are sort of concentrating on. So it's a mixture of aquaculture and a little bit of a frag Whoa. chop shop. These are some experimental watermelon Bugatti chalices that we're uh, that we're Those actually are crazy. grafting at the moment. If you guys could see my mouth right now, it's it, my jaw is is hitting the floor. These are these are absolutely wild. And this is another graft what that we've been experimenting this? with. That's another graft of like an alien eye and another one that we've just recently done oh, that on is... that. So that's the mother. So we're from now we'll start to play with her if you like once How we've got away with it. How do you get them to graft? You just... Well we just experiment. It didn't always work. We've obviously tried different species and sometimes it doesn't work. But How, how old are these systems? Like these, this looks really, really um, mature this here. This is around about five years, four or five years old. We had a refurb a few years ago in here um, where we're doing it. But this is where, as I say, a lot of the... Um, uh, fun aspect of the business really you yeah, know I understand that part of yeah the farming the gardening yeah so very often there'll be species in here that they've already passed some sort of dip regime yeah mm -hmm. um, and then from there if we feel that we're finding some magic from here then it will slowly be moved to this table this table's just been recently rebooted but this is the final stop before the store 
What are these? Braced on the outside? No, they're just trims, just trim. trimmed off oh. for some new PPC. Oh, okay. Just I... to keep a nice, clean, and tidy look. Yeah, and it's very tidy in here, very clean. Again, no substrate. No. Nope. That's the re that's really the way to do it. Oh, some of that bird's nest that I love. Incredible, incredible stuff. How, what percentage of what you're selling would you say is um, grown here or aquaculture? Uh, probably really being gen it's probably around about 30 to 30 percent, 40 percent. And I guess with time, it just continues to increase, yeah, right? If we find some magic, like say for example in there, a lot of our perhaps our higher end paid species that we find, right? If we feel that we've got some magic in it, so that, you know, we'll uh, then develop that. So for example, the one that we're quite well known for is this. This is uh, what we call the AAC sourberry, which looks very much like your PC rainbow that you'll be familiar with. Yeah, more or so less. That's, yeah, you know, that, that's one that we feel is worth putting into culture. Yeah, so we'll, yeah it's we'll got to be worth growing. Yeah, it's got to be worth growing. Right. Although, in saying that, we cater for everyone. So this is really where a lot of our beginner stuff so comes from. Softy, some Zinia, um, some, yeah. some Zoas. But these, these are all fully aquacultured by us. This is the uh, species you saw the, next door. That big one. Yeah. Are zoanthids so, big in, in the UK? Uh, zoanthids are relatively big. We're not so big on them here, but you can see that's a fully aquacultured oh, alveopora. And from that, we'll, we, we don't hold massive mother colonies. Mm -hmm. So we'll use a lot of what you see that are large frags is where we'll frag from. Mm -hmm. So even these, you although- take this and then cut it into yes, 12 pieces yeah. or Once something. we know that we've got it and it's healthy and it's starting to do really well, then we'll put it into culture. Even I'm this species- I'm surprised how much flow you have them. Like I usually keep them yeah. under quite low. Um, we find that they base out a little bit better. This again, this is a species of Australian uh, alveopora yeah. and you can see the growth on there it's as it's starting such, to touch down. Such a nice piece. It's just yeah. green, but when it's healthy, there's yeah, nothing like that's it. That's right. So we don't, that's another species that we've sort of cultured over the years, Hi like a, a hydnophore, an encrusting type. But this has gone fallen out of fashion lately. So we'll just park it and then save it. We, we try never to lose isn't our it, heirloom. Isn't it weird that corals go in fads? <laughs> yes, it's absolutely. Like yeah. styles, like clothing, yeah. and yeah. stuff comes and goes. That's, that's quite a rare uh, digital you don't see. It's yeah, the it's German like, blue poly. But the skinny one, yeah. it's, like, yes. uh, it's almost yeah. like a stellata. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is our sort of weedy tank that we'll take a lot of cuttings from on there. What is that in the back, that digi there? Uh, I'm not, it's uh, green it's, with red yeah, polyps. Yeah, it's a sort of forest fiery looking type. Yeah, but it's different. Usually, yes. I'm used to. It's like a reverse forest yes. fire. Yes. Yeah. Okay. If there's a single piece from the thousands that we've seen here that I would smuggle back in my suitcase, that's it right there. That's the one I would take. There's other ones that are rare that I've seen. That's that's one that's something else. And maybe for him, he just called it weedy. Isn't that weird? That you know, for somebody, it's oh, it's a weedy. It's over here. Yeah. And then for me, like if if I would go to jail for a piece, it's that one. That's the one that's worth it. <laughs> this we haven't seen for a number oh, of years. The, the, uh, this is, yeah, it's the turban area, but the one that Walt Smith used to send over years and years ago from Walt Fiji. Smith? Yeah. yeah. He's not around uh, anymore, is no, he? No, he's, well he is, but he's uh, not exporting coral anymore from Fiji. But we still keep pea species like this, even though, again, it's not trendy. Yeah. None of this is trendy. Does it have but, nostalgic value for you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I have... mean, I, I keep a lot of coral that no, I'll never sell. Let me show you the worst yeah. coral in the world. Oh, show the me. One that I keep. So let's talk. This is the worst coral in the world. This. Yeah, I mean, what, what is, is it? It's not a coral. It's a rock. Yeah. Twenty years. It I've never fragged it. I just let it grow. Rise. It's like a poor It's just like a yeah, friendly. Just a, yeah. It's just a friendly guy. Yeah. This is one of our own aquaculture types here. This is what we call spooky nights. Like a like a Fabia? Yeah, it's a type of sort of I've uh, grafted that one as well oh, with what we call cool. spooky day and spooky night. What nights. do you call this over here? That's a short cake. Short it's a cake, type yeah. of short cake. Oh, it's good. just one that we've you know, hoping that will become to, you know, something reasonable. You have some really really see that's what I think is forest fire in the back there. Yes. It's kind of red yeah. and then it goes green yeah. on the I tips. I must admit I've not really noticed what you noticed there. You, say, you know what, when you see it every day, <laughs> yeah. it, you, need, yeah. you need the fresh yeah. eyes. A lot of this, as I say, is, uh, you know, there are some species in here that we've had for a number of years, but there's a lot of experimental species, you know, we've, everyone's got this, but, the but you know, I still, I still hold on to it. It's you a know. classic. Yeah, it's a classic. What do you, you know. We call it Miyagi. Yeah, uh, yes, I mean, we've, we've just uh, taught or whatever. Tortusa, the, tort, the, yeah. These we've been experimenting with lately as well, this sort of golden draw, jaw dropper looking types. Almost yeah. looks like a Acropora rosario or something. Yes, rosario. Rosario, yeah. 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 But it's hard to tell until you see a full colony. Sometimes yeah. as a frag, it's yeah. they all start to look like Millies or Tenuous or. Yes. Yeah. 
super, yeah. everything's super healthy. Like, there's not a single bleached or peeling or just, it's just a, an, an awesome array collection of, of some of the nicest acro I've ever seen. And you keep grasses, I see, in all the tanks. Yes, yeah. every single tank. Just in case. Always. The, yeah, always. Yeah. And then because the, this side is still sort of fairly wild. And a nice big one. Look, this is a Heliocor, like a mist, no. Me Melanaris. Me Melanaris, yeah. No lids, though. You know, no lids, no, no, not these, but we've got braces, so there's a chance, but on there. Beautiful fish. Incredible, incredible stuff in here. It's absolutely chocker with weedy cypherstria growing all up the sides and everything. Hmm. I stripped it yesterday. Why, you knew we were coming? Uh, no. No, this was <laughs> a very, know. this is a very... This is spot, this was, obviously we didn't know at all, but very it was just a shame, second. because I'd like you to have seen it how it was, because yep. it was as dense as that, but oh, yesterday... Wow. I decided yesterday that um, we'd start thinning it out. There's, there's, there's a few nice pieces in here. What do you call this Monty? Yeah. Um, Color Wences? Uh, yeah, that's um, like the Kung Pao Kung type. Kung yeah. Pao, yeah. We've got some gold brush there though, uh, which is uh, quite nice. But yesterday there was some polyps invading the ceramic tiles. So I had to trim yesterday. There was like a fine clove type polyp. The purple was, or blue or something? Yeah, it was one of them little nuisance those cloves. Those yeah, those shitty ones. So that's why I stripped it yesterday. Oh, and, and, you know, there's uh, more deviances. Yeah, so this is nice. I mean, sometimes it fingers. Yes. You get it sort of in a club. In the display, you'll see that there's turrets or clubs in there. Yeah. That's good. That's good. You have lots of craft and lots yeah. here. Yeah. These are, that's the cool thing with the Capricornus, you can mix different ones yes. together and then sometimes you get them to like truly, truly graft. Mm. Incredible. Yeah, that's... You don't have a lot of Zoas. I'm well, no, I are, mean, I see we, some Rastas. Hiding yes, here. yeah, we don't, we don't do, we don't, we're not well known for, you know, we, we've got our forte. It's not that I don't like them, I just, I've never, I'm not so up on them. What is this thing on the walk? That's, that, that's Philips Coral Care. I've never seen one in person. Hmm. Yeah. How do you like it? You yeah, really they, use every single light here. Yes, well, they, they, these are completely waterproof. If you're setting up a farm or something where, by, you know, where there's a lot of moisture, these are particularly useful. What are you getting for spread? It looks like three feet. Yes, like yeah, three feet. It's three not a huge feet. par animal, but it does give great spread. Yeah, I've never seen one. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. And then for I, uh, that's how you're getting air out of the room to keep the humidity down. Yeah, we're down. sucking air out through there, but we're bringing in cold air through there, air cons there, and then fans there. So they're constantly. And also because we get the dry goods as well over stock, stock mm -hmm. we don't want the boxes going all, <laughs> all mouldy, you know. Look at these fish, just incredible fish. Very shy still, Blue face, yeah, yeah really shy. Yeah, yeah. camera shy. Again, um, from the Reef Factory boys. Yeah, this is all, I literally learned about this yesterday. Yeah. yeah. I just got in today, 7 a.m. He's, was... he's run uh, monitored by the Alcatronic, again with the dosing solutions, but we're using an old school calcium reactor, which you'll see from so there. Sort of similar system to what you Very have going similar, on there. Yeah, it's all natural, a whole yeah. lot's natural, naturally done. And this, these systems are getting water changed? Yes, they will, they will have around about 400 wow. litres a week. 400 oh, litres a week, yeah. oh yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Look at these Polythoa grandis. I don't think I've ever seen a larger piece. That will put you in the hospital very quickly. <laughs> no, a, that's no, why no, it's no. at the back corner yeah. in the sun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But they're, they're such, and he's getting really cool. Sometimes you, you don't get the white, you'll just get the green. These ones are showing off like perfect color, exactly what you want to see out of them. And the size, like, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, they look like golf balls. It's a true, true pally throw there. Really cool. So that's nice. Uh, no, the soft barrel. Nephthia. Well, or Cinularia, Nephthia. Uh, no, that's a Nephthia. Nephthia, yeah. yeah. Even your stumps, your stumps are yeah. full of nice stuff. Yeah, and down in, uh, so for example, when Rai called it coming from the Caribbean, you know, you obviously don't have a much stun attached, so we'll have to settle them. This is really a bit, a bit of a dumping ground. Kind of let, <laughs> let them attack. It's the nicest dumping ground I've ever seen. Yeah. It's a beautiful bit of corals. Yeah. The skimmers that I use are slightly undersized. The best in the biz. Oh, sure. I haven't seen one of these. This might, that might actually be the rarest thing here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a classic. This is yeah. Hold on to that. Yeah, that must be 10 years, 11 years yeah. old. And it, not only is it rare, it's rare. It's still working after 10 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. It's Funny pretty, enough, pretty actually, cool. I found that old, the old system really good. They're good, yeah. 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 yeah, no, they're really good. These are different for us. We have EB-8s, but I guess you guys have EB-6? Yes, yeah, that's um, the old style bar. We, st we still have the different. new one as well. 
So yeah, I'm sorry I didn't bring you here to Germany to this. Now I feel bad. I'm everything I keep thinking of you. Everything I see, I'm like, damn, Tia would have loved this. Uh, this is your favorite piece. Yeah. Uh, Daisy, I've uh, uh, named a Daisy Duke. Yeah, which is a uh, new gonopora. It's got uh, nice aqua blue stems with pink tips. We've only just fragged up the mum, so we're keeping our fingers crossed at the moment. But yeah, I absolutely love it. And this is Dan's experimental grafting technique he's using Ooh. over there. That's, that's yeah. different. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> We're going to see how they turn out. This is why I love coming to other shops, seeing other stores. You just see the way people do it. There's no rule book to this stuff. You see it, there's always, you always learn something, something new. You always get an idea and I'm, I'm getting a ton here. It's so cool. Griffin Bandsaw, industry standard. <laughs> awesome. I, I, I can honestly say it's probably one of the best new products. Look. You hear that guys? It's being, it really is. consultancy is giving the thumbs up, one of the yeah. best. And I'm very skeptical about filter floss rollers because anything I've tried up until now has been absolute shiza. Yeah, well I've time. So will you frag, you will frag out of the display tanks? Like oh, if I want a piece of the blue digi? Absolutely, yeah, we, and then we, we usually got it available anyway. Okay, but. so you know what, this is where I argue with Pat. Pat who said that yeah. to come and see you. He says displays don't make money. Absolute rubbish. You Pat. see, okay, so you know what Pat, here, from, from one of the legends, do displays make money? Yes, absolutely. Hundred percent. Because I, I, you like the coral. You want a piece. There's money. I'm going to give you the piece. Oh, you like radions? That's what I'm using. Come over to the counter. Give me your credit card. You can, you can. The, you have to show people. And he, he has this idea. He always says displays do not make money. And I, I listen. His word is like the word of God. When he speaks to me, yeah. I've learned a lot from him. Except that one, that one thing, I, I have to disagree yeah, with him. I think it depends on the display aquarium. So, for example, yeah, if you have know. a two thousand, yeah. uh, twenty thousand liter display, yes. maybe if you. Yes. But Absolutely. But I mean, you've obviously got to offset your fuel costs and your staffing costs and everything else that goes with it, in fairness to Patrick. But the amount of, the amount of yeah. frags that come out of here? Yeah. So if we need, say for example, we start to run out, because we we've only got so much room to grow corals, as, as I'm sure you find out. You yes. Up, that's why all of our fragged stuff next door is small colonies. It's not massive colonies like Top Shelf. You go, they've got big colonies. Huge colonies. Beautiful yeah. big colonies. We haven't got room. Mm -hmm. you, know, or, you know, you can imagine the per square footage rent and rates here is far higher. So we use the displays in order to grow out what we want. And um, particularly the one at the end, the DD one, this one is where all of our my fine bits, so you know like the grafted the, chalice. The high end stuff. Yeah, so you know the grafted uh, chalice where we're experimenting with the Bugatti and the watermelon. Yeah. So that's mum watermelon. So she's been fragged about six times, yeah? All of our grafted Monty that you saw next door has all come from two pieces that this size. I hope you hear this, Pat. I'm sending this video to you. <laughs> Displays make money. He's also the distributor for Radeon. When I put on a pair and people ask me what lights I use and they see yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. Well, in here we try and be impartial in the sense that we'll use you guys a use of ev brands. you use everything. Yeah, yeah. you have everything. Yeah. The only thing I don't see in here is Kessel. Kessel, we do do the refugium Kessel, but the H80 and the yeah, the, yeah I like their fuge lights. Yeah, yeah. The, the Kessel's not as um, how can I put it, not as trendy in the UK as perhaps some of the other brands are. I'm not crazy about about their reef lights. Um, whenever I say that on our channel, I get a lot of feedback, and like yeah, people say sure. I, I, su I suck and I'm dumb, but I've used them and I'm just I'm not blown away with the 360. Though I'm just yeah. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're all entitled to our opinion. Yeah. This is really the industry standard here, is the Radions. It's nice to see a full row of them. Man, we covered a lot. I don't know what else we can talk about. A lot, a lot, a lot going on here. So, coffee time. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Oh, that's really hot. I'm gonna put that down for a second, and I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap up probably one of my favorite videos we've ever shot here on the channel. I could spend all day here. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know this was last minute. Yeah. We literally just showed up and said, hi, the Canadians are here, but it's an incredible, incredible shop. If you guys ever have find yourself out this way, um, where are we, Harlow? Harlow, Essex, near London. At Essex, near London. Yeah, it didn't take us that long to get out here. Advanced Aquarium Consultancy, amazing, amazing store, amazing farm, displays, hardware, fish, top to bottom, reef tanks, whatever you're looking for, these guys are a one-stop shop with care and experience behind everything that they're selling. I uh, hope you guys liked it. Please give us that subscribe button. It'll be our last video until we come back to Canada. And have a nice day. Thanks for watching this episode of Fragbox TV.